As we explore the beautiful landscapes and hidden corners of our world, there's an invisible danger lurking beneath the surface, affecting more lives than you might imagine. Lyme disease, often underestimated and misunderstood, has become a hidden epidemic, silently spreading its web in various parts of the world, often leaving sick patients without proper diagnosis and treatment. Did you know that Lyme disease is the most common tick-borne infection in the United States and Canada? An estimated 476,000 Americans are diagnosed with it each year, but only a fraction are officially reported. Stay tuned to the end as we share valuable insights, because if Lyme disease is caught early, it could save you years of treatment and unnecessary medical costs. So let's dive in. Lyme disease is associated with Connecticut in the U.S. because it was first identified in the town of Lyme, Connecticut, in 1975. A cluster of cases involving unusual symptoms, such as arthritis like joint pain, was reported in children in Lyme and the surrounding areas. Researchers and health officials eventually identified the cause as a bacterial infection transmitted by ticks, particularly the black-legged tick, Ixod scapularis, also known as the deer tick. The bacterium responsible for Lyme disease is Borrelia burgdorferi, and it is transmitted to humans through the bite of infected ticks. Lyme disease has since been found in various parts of the United States and other countries like Canada, Australia, but the initial cluster of cases in Lyme, Connecticut, played a crucial role in its discovery and recognition. You're about to discover might just change the way you would deal with a tick bite. This is not something you will want to miss. If you've seen the acclaimed documentary Under Our Skin from Open Eye Pictures, you know the unsettling truth Lyme disease is more complex, more pervasive, and more insidious than we once thought. Under Our Skin took us beneath the surface, exposing the tangled web of politics, controversies, and the human toll of this enigmatic illness. Today, we're not just talking about statistics and symptoms, we're diving into the very essence of what Lyme disease can cause within the human body, how to recognize the signs and how to access early treatment. Disclaimer, we're here to share valuable insights, but remember, we're not your go-to for medical advice. This content is for educational purposes only and does not substitute professional medical care. Our exploration begins with the chilling realization that Lyme disease is not confined to the shadowy corners of remote landscapes and is closer than we think. The alarming rise and spread of this affliction in regions we never expected, like northeastern states, including Connecticut, Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. The projected spread of Lyme-infected ticks across Canada, 2010 to 2080, map shows a rampant spread throughout most of the provinces. These areas have a higher incidence of Lyme disease, primarily due to the abundance of black-legged ticks, deer ticks, it's a tale of ticks adapting to a changing climate, infiltrating urban parks, and silently invading our neighborhoods. Building on the revelations of Under Our Skin, we unravel the complexities of misdiagnosis. The documentary showcased the frustration of patients and the resistance within the medical community. Ticks are prevalent in various regions across the United States and Canada, with different species adapted to different environments. Ticks thrive in areas with tall grass, bushes, and wooded surroundings. These environments provide the ideal conditions for ticks to quest for hosts. They are commonly found in forests and open fields, where they can latch onto animals or humans passing through the vegetation. They need a host to latch on. Ticks are also known to inhabit areas with dense vegetation, including shrubs and bushes. Be aware, avid hikers and campers. Here are some tips for prevention. Number four is astonishing, and we guarantee you, it may save your health. Number one, dress appropriately. Wear long sleeves, long pants, and white or light-colored clothing to be able to easily see potential ticks. Number two, use tick repellent. Number three, stick to established trails to reduce contact with dense vegetation and decrease the likelihood of encountering ticks. Number four, inspect your gear and clothing before and after your hike. Carefully check your clothing, gear, and body for ticks. Number five, Pay special attention to areas where ticks tend to attach, such as the ankles, waistline, and armpits. Lastly, carry and have a tick removal tool in your first aid kit and know how to use it. Prompt removal is essential to reduce the risk of disease transmission if bitten. Let's continue to explore where ticks tend to hang out. Ticks often infest areas with abundant wildlife as they feed on animals like deer, rodents, and birds during different stages of their life cycle. Veterinarians are no stranger to ticks as they often remove them off dogs. Before you attempt to remove a tick, 
you need to know where they like to hang out on your pet's body. Ticks tend to like to hide in warm, moist areas. The common locations to find ticks on your pet include ears, both in and around, eyelids, around the tail, under their collar, between the digits, toes of any paw, armpits, groin. Be aware, ticks are more active in warm and humid conditions. However, some species can also survive in cooler climates. Ticks are typically more active during warmer months, especially in late spring, summer, and early fall. However, they can be active year-round in milder climates. During warmer months, April to September is when most ticks are most active, but they can be encountered year-round. Ticks are even present during the winter. Hiking with your pets and camping with your pets in the woods is a prime time for being exposed to ticks since they like the weedy edges of paths and trails, especially in areas with abundant wildlife. So again, if you're spending time in areas where ticks are common, taking preventive measures such as wearing light-colored long sleeves and pants, using tick repellent, and checking for ticks after outdoor activities can help reduce the risk of tick bites. So, picture this, you're out in the great outdoors, enjoying nature's beauty. Suddenly, you start feeling like you caught a bug. No, not the nature-loving kind, but something's off. You might be dealing with Lyme disease, and it comes with its own set of signs and symptoms. First off, there's this rash called erythema migrans, EM. Imagine it like a bullseye mark, kind of like in a target. But here's the twist, not everyone gets it. Yup, around 70-80% of folks with Lyme disease won't remember a tick bite or see this distinctive rash. It's like Lyme disease playing hide and seek. What does this mean exactly? You can't rely on a rash as the sole guide to determine if you have Lyme disease. Early stages, between 3 to 30 days, may include fever, chills, fatigue, headache, migrating muscle aches, stiff or sore neck, and occasionally joint pain in major joints like your knees or hands. You get the flu-like vibes. You might feel feverish, get the chills, and experience fatigue that makes you want to take an impromptu nap. It's like your body saying, hey, something's up. Then there's the brain fog headaches, dizziness, and a hard time focusing that can be longer term. It's like your brain's on a roller coaster, not the fun kind. As the infection progresses, it can affect the nervous system, leading to more and more neurological symptoms. And the joints? Brace yourself for some joint pain and swelling, especially in the knees. It's like arthritis decided to crash the party. Lastly, once Lyme disease is disseminated, it can spread to various bodily systems and can mess with your heart. Palpitations and chest pain could be on the guest list. Things to avoid when removing ticks on pets or humans. There are a couple of things you definitely don't want to do, or at least try to avoid doing, when removing a tick from your pet. Don't try to remove an attached tick by burning it with a match, smothering it with Vaseline, or painting it with nail polish. I've known pet owners who tried all of these methods. None of them will work, but rather cause the tick to stick around longer than desired, and the whole match thing is a fire hazard altogether. Avoid squeezing the body of the tick when handling it or trying to remove it. Doing so can cause regurgitation of the nasty and disease-causing bacteria and other microorganisms from the tick's gut into your pet's bloodstream. And these could be the very disease-causing agents you're trying to protect you or your pet from in the first place. Don't wiggle or jerk the tick to remove it. By wiggling or twisting the tick, you increase the risk that the head or mouth parts will break off and remain in your dog or cat's skin. Avoid leaving the head in. There is an increased risk of infection if the head is left embedded in the skin. Don't handle the tick with your bare hands. Wear exam gloves when removing ticks to stay as safe as possible. Studies have shown that removing ticks with tweezers instead of other methods, such as bare hands, protects against complications and infections. So, long story short, make sure that you have gloves and tweezers in your handy kit. Keep the tick with you in a sealed plastic bag or container. In some cities, you can bring it to a laboratory in order to get it tested to confirm if it carries the disease. Also make sure that you or your pet seek prompt medical care. This is a case where you want to wait and see what happens. Tell the doctor about your recent tick bite, when the bite occurred, and where you most likely acquired the tick. If your doctor seems to be dismissive, seek a second opinion and make sure that you get access to early treatment, which will likely involve a round of antibiotics. Lyme disease can lead to long-term symptoms, especially if the infection is not diagnosed and treated promptly.
Some individuals may experience what is commonly referred to as post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome or chronic late-stage Lyme disease. Long-term symptoms can vary and may include joint pain and swelling, persistent arthritis-like symptoms, particularly in the knees, can continue for an extended period, neurological issues, cognitive difficulties, memory problems, and difficulties with concentration may persist. Some individuals may experience nerve-related symptoms like tingling or numbness. Chronic fatigue and a general feeling of being unwell can persist long after the initial infection. Ongoing muscle aches and pain may affect individuals with chronic Lyme disease. Sleep disturbances, insomnia, or disrupted sleep patterns can be long-term issues for some individuals. Headaches, recurrent headaches, including migraines, can persist in chronic Lyme disease cases. Heart problems. In some cases, Lyme disease can affect the heart, leading to conditions such as Lyme carditis. Long-term cardiac symptoms may include palpitations and chest pain. Vision issues. Some individuals may experience visual disturbances, such as double vision or eye inflammation. If you suspect Lyme disease or experience symptoms after a tick bite or potential exposure, it is crucial to seek medical attention promptly. Early diagnosis and an appropriate antibiotic treatment can significantly reduce the risk of long-term complications. For those experiencing persistent symptoms, consultation with a healthcare professional who is Lyme literate and very knowledgeable about the clinical presentation of Lyme. Not all doctors are equipped to treat Lyme. A holistic approach to chronic or late-stage Lyme disease is essential as antibiotics alone may not be sufficient to help your body recover and heal. For more information on how to find a Lyme literate professional, consult the International Lyme and Associated Diseases Society. By understanding the signs, taking preventive measures, and seeking timely medical attention, we empower ourselves to navigate the outdoors with confidence. Lyme disease, often silent in its early stages, can have lasting implications on our health if left unchecked. As you embark on your outdoor adventures, whether through the woods, fields, or nature's hidden trails, Remember that knowledge is your strongest ally. Stay informed, protect yourself with proper clothing and repellents, and be diligent in checking for ticks. By sharing this valuable information with others, you contribute to a community that is informed, proactive, and resilient in the face of this hidden epidemic. If you found this video insightful and want to stay informed about health topics, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Together, let's spread awareness. See you in the next video.